So, some of you guys might not know this, but Skylanders did have games on the 3DS. Now, I usually don't talk about Nintendo on this channel because they'll probably sue me if I do even talk about their games. But if you guys didn't know, yeah, Skylanders had 3DS games. Now, if you guys don't know, I only had the 2DS, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't own any of these games. But I plan to eventually own all the games because I want to have more Skylanders experiences. But all these games do look good for what they are, which are 3DS games. But we're going to take a quick run through in this video today of all five of the 3DS games. Because if you guys don't know, Imaginers actually made its release on the Nintendo Switch and it never got a 3DS different version. The reason why I'm dedicating the video to this is because if you guys don't know, all the 3DS games for Skylanders have a completely different story and might even be set in a different universe, I'm not sure, than the actual games. All these different, like, stories that you see in the 3DS games are just like little adventures, like different branches. You never actually fight chaos in any of them. Which is kind of cool, actually. So yeah, in today's video, we'll be talking about Skylanders 3DS games. All the stories and gameplay in the 3DS games are completely different from the actual story. That's how it usually is for any game that gets ported to a 3DS. All the Spyro DS and Crash DS games were completely different stories from the original games. They had to add 2DS games though because the 3DS had not come out at that time. But like I said, whenever a main console game gets ported to the 3DS game, just because of usually the limitations of the 3DS or 2DS, they have to have shorter and more simpler stories, and usually completely different ones from the actual game. So let's get right into the first Skylanders game on the 3DS. I might also note that the starter packs for the 3DS are also different, which I don't really understand why, but whatever. This one comes with Dark Spyro, not regular Spyro, kind of weird. But it also came with Igniter and Stealth Elf, which to my knowledge, both of those Skylanders did not come out on day one. So if you wanted to get these Skylanders early, there you go, get the 3DS starter pack. Also, when you get this game on the 3DS, and you put the game into the 3DS, it gives you this nice jingle. So, out of the gate, this game's main focus is not saving Skylands. All the 3DS games is focus on usually little shorter adventures, and they might not just be saving Skylands, but a different part of it. In this game, instead of saving Skylands, you're saving the Radiant Isles. So this is home to some mystic seekers, until the darkness came like in the original one, but with the darkness coming, also Hector did. And let me just say, Hector looks very cool, and it's also nice to see a new fresh villain instead of chaos for the 15th time. It already makes this game very interesting because the main villain is in chaos. So back to the story, Hector is an invader from the Outlands and he used his dark power to enslave the Seekers and the Raiden Isles, and he makes them build a dark mirror and shroud the Raiden Isles from all the Skylands so you can't see it. And it's kind of weird that he just wanted to just take the Radiant Isles. Maybe there's something special there. I don't really know. But maybe it would just have been a conflict of interest with Chaos. I don't know. So, in the beginning, we meet this old dude Fargus and his son Wendell. So basically, Fargus gives us a lousy explanation of why he can't help us, but Wendell can. Lazy old man. Curse you. Anyway, Hector comes out of nowhere and lasers him out of existence. Guess what? Fargus isn't actually dead. Shocker. So we get into the game, and there's just some simple jumping platforming. Wait, you can jump? What the heck, Activision? So you can jump in the 3DS port of the game, but not in the mainline console game. It just doesn't make any sense that you could always jump in the 3DS levels, but never the console ones. And just, why? Why? Like, I get that they wanted to make it different, and probably adding platforming would make it a lot more fun, especially for a 3DS game, but why couldn't we have jumping in the console games if it's in the 3DS game? Whatever, that just adds more to the 3DS, I guess, of this, this game in the 3DS. So, it's cool, you can jump. I must say, the level design in this game, especially for the 3DS, is great actually. I'm very surprised. Another cool touch is that most of the levels at some point will say Hector is coming and give you a timer and there are some collectibles that you have to collect that will give you more time. I like that touch because it always keeps you on the feet and makes sure that Hector does not catch you. But in total, 
there are six locations Brighthold, Battlement, River and Rock Caverns, White Fall Summits, Faylar Jungle, Gaggle Crack Ruins, and the Dark Mirror. Each of these areas have some levels and challenges in them. I really like that the game just does not stick with one area, it easily could have, and it makes it just seem more diverse. I don't know if you should count the Dark Mirror as its own area since you only really fight Hector, but I'll count it because it's the boss fight. So finally, you fight Hector. And, you know, you fight him and then it's a race to the, the Dark Mirror with some fun platform in there. And then once you get there, you put the staff Vargas gave you in front of it. And boom! It breaks the mirror and Hector as well with it. Honestly, I'm kind of sad to see Hector gone so soon. But he was only made to be here for one game. Anyway, when Don Vargas meet up and bada boom bada bing, you did it. You saved the Radiant Isles. Also, yes, you can play the expansion packs in this game. Sadly, they are definitely a step down from the originals, but they are they are different levels. So, I mean, what do you really expect out of them? Darklight Crypt is especially different from the OG version, but that's it for SSA on the 3DS. Now, it's nowhere near the console version, you know, but I don't think it was trying to be. It was just trying to be a fun portable version of SSA and I think it succeeded in that and overall the game looks great and I can't wait to see the next Skylanders game on the 3DS so let's get to Giants. In the starter pack for this game you get Trirex and Cinder again but instead of Jetvac you get Punch Pop Fizz. Not regular Pop Fizz, Punch Pop Fizz because I don't know why. I understand that it's cool to have a variant, but I'd much rather have Pop Fizz with the actual starter pack. It always seems that there's a variant Skyland in all the 3DS starter packs. Whatever. So, when this game loads into the 3DS, you don't get a cool jingle. You get Tree Rex yelling at you. Nice. So right out of the gate, the story is not as interesting as the last. This time, all they tell you is that Frightbeard has returned, and that's it. I mean, at least Hector did something evil at the beginning last time. This time, ooh, it's Frightbeard, and he's back. You should defeat him or something. Anyway, in the beginning, Hugo tells you Flynn got captured by pirates, and we need to rescue him. Giants also, I might add, have feet of strengths in this game. They're definitely not as cool as the console ones, but they're here. Again, you can jump, but you can't jump in the console versions. Freaking nice. This first level is pretty cool. It's a pirate-themed level, and it gives me pirate sea vibes, which is always a welcome touch. Anyway, we get Flynn back and make our escape. Apparently, Flynn mistakes this treasure map for a cake, something like that, but it turns out that it's actually a map of a treasure chest, which the Archeans made to trap Frightbeard inside of, and they sealed it shut. They don't tell us how Frightbeard got out, but just go with it. At least we know how he got here. So, in this game, we're just trying to find the chest before Frightbeard, basically, but the Dreadyok is back again as a hub world and it's definitely different but it's nice to see it back this time there are seven areas including the first level pirate bay tiki island sand dune seas tech theme park rush marsh pirate fortress and the maelstorm the milestorm i don't know again in all these areas except for pirate bay because that's the first level there are more than one level and some challenges again nice touch and makes the game feel more vast Eventually, we fight Frightbeard, and the boss battle is definitely better than Hector, but I still enjoy Hector more than Dreadbeard, probably because Hector had a bigger role and you got some platforming at the very end of the level. But anyway, Dreadbeard gets sucked back into his chest and yells this. And he technically is right. Because he does come back as a playable villain in Superchargers. Huh. Overall, another good 3DS game, but I still cannot stack it up to the console counterpart. But you can still have a fun time with this. However, just by absorbing it, I think that I would say I would probably have a better time playing SSA. It's 3DS port. Not saying that Skylanders Giants 3DS port is a bad game for that, though. Alright, next to Swap Force. I can't wait to see this. In the 3DS starter pack, we get Free Ranger and Rattleshake, both good, good swappers, and yes, another variant, Volcanic Eruptor. I don't understand, I would much rather have regular Series 3 Eruptor, but whatever. Fun fact, this game never says how the Swap Force get their powers, at the beginning it just says they can swap. Weird. Whatever. 
So, the evildoer in this game is Count Moneybone, who would later be introduced to the console players in the console version of Superchargers. Kind of cool to see Count Moneybone back. Well, not necessarily back, this is actual first appearance, and he is the main villain. And in this game, Moneybone makes a clockwork army, and he is plotting something evil. I mean, just look at his evil stare, you can tell. So, in the beginning, we are in Boomtown. That's right, Boomtown. And someone who I'm assuming is the mayor of this town announces that the first day of spring shall be known as Flynn Day. I like to see how Flynn is finally getting his recognition after all these years. And he gets a golden statue too. How epic. But sadly, just as that's at its revealed, the statue gets tipped over by Count Moneybone himself. Then he gives the usual bad guy spiel, I'm big and scary and you should fear me, whatever, and he takes Flynn's statue and turns Callie into an undead monster. And that's about it for the story, and we get Boomtown as a hub world. And this time, I can say, I honestly like it. It's actually a very cool hub world. Nice touch. And we get, again, seven areas. Sky Docks, Ancient Woods, Crystal Caverns, Coral Head Cove, Samurai Islands, Undead Fiesta, and Clock World Castle. Just like the console version of Swap Wars, the levels are very much longer, which is always not welcomed. But again, the level design is great, what can I say? I feel like I'm repeating myself at this point, but the gameplay in all these games feel very similar. Yes, the levels are different and things like that, but they all just feel kind of the same. And by the third 3DS game, you should maybe try to fix that. Then again, I may be asking too much for a 3DS port of a game. Anyway, you go through all these levels and finally make it the Count Moneybone. This finale boss fight is actually very fun. Remember, I'm not playing any of these games, but just by looking at it, and it looks like the most fun, in my opinion. You actually go in different areas in this boss fight, and it is not limited to one area. Then you destroy Moneybone's mech suit, and he thinks he can beat you in a brawl, but you only have to hit him once and he gets defeated, so that's pretty funny. We get back to Boomtown, and Callie's back to normal is no, and is no longer undead. But more importantly, Flynn's statue is back, and standing tall and proud. You can also play two expansion pack levels in this game, and they are different. I feel the same way about them as I did the first ones. They're just very different from the original ones, but fine overall. Another 3DS game in the book. Honestly, from observing this one, this game would probably be my least favorite 3DS game. I just feel like it overstays its welcome in many ways, especially for a 3DS game. Not necessarily that it's a bad game for that, I mean it is a 3DS game, how good can it be? But a fine 3DS game at that. Now let's get on to the other 3DS game, Trap Team. And immediately from this, I realize that this game will either be better than all the other ones or worse than all the other games. So in all the previous 3DS games, you actually had cutscenes, this time it's just pictures. So. I'm guessing that either their gameplay might improve because they didn't spend as much time on the cutscenes, or maybe they just didn't care. We'll see. So, in this game, Hugo accidentally reads from a cursed book. Don't know how he managed to pull that one off, but cool. He falls asleep, and because he read this creepy book, ancient book, ooh, scary, a bunch of nightmare creatures from the realm of dreams, you know, ooh, spooky, come out of that book. These guys are the villains that will be trapping as we go through the game. And this also lets out the dream sheep, a very bad sheep. Also the dream sheep rides on this big dragon who sleeps a lot. So the dream sheep use his dream dragon, I'm saying dream a lot, and they haven't shut up about it yet, to put a sleep on all of Skylands, a sleep spell. So everyone's just sleeping. And the hub world is I think the library from the academy, I'm not sure. But then this book starts talking to you, for some reason, and he tells you that you're in the Eternal Archives, home to the Warrior Librarians. I swear, these games, these 3DS games, get keep getting more convoluted as we go. But whatever, they're keepers of the most dangerous books ever written. How can a book be dangerous? Anyway, this guy tells you that, you know, one of them's asleep, so you gotta wake, wake them up. And we have to find him. This hub world is actually pretty nice looking. You meet these other talking books that look exactly like the other one, but different colors, and they lead you to the other areas. Skystones also makes an appearance in this game, nice touch. And it's the OG version too, the superior one in my opinion. We get to the first villain, Boris Blisterbottom. Yeah. Okay. He's a chompy, and has a design from the Swap Force chompies, which I hate. 
A thing that I'm not necessarily a big fan of in this game is that all the villains have the same color scheme. As you can see here, yellow and purple. But I guess it makes sense because they are all from the Nightmare Realm or something. So, I'll let it pass. You can also do this cool thing with Trap Masters before you trap a villain, like this cool move or something. I don't know, it's neat. And then when you have to trap a villain, you have to spin the vortex at the bottom of 3DS, and that's a welcome addition in my opinion. So you can spawn the villains once you catch them, and they do an attack. But you can't play as them. Why can't you play as them? The whole point of the trap team was to play as villains, and in the 3DS version, you can. And don't say it's because of the limitations of the 3DS, because I know you could easily do it. Because you can switch from two Skylanders at a time while you're playing, so why can't I switch to the villain? It just makes this game feel so much more lazy, and not even being able to play as a villain just to rub the salt in the womb, you also have to wait for them to do their attacks. Like, it would have been better if you could just always pop them up and do their attacks, but no, you have to wait like 20 seconds. If you're marketing this game to be able to play as villains, and you don't deliver that, that's just really disappointing. Now to be fair, there are levels where you only play as villains, so each villain has their own level you can play as, but it's not the same. Like, imagine if you could switch to the villain, for a limited amount of time obviously, like within the main game, but also get their levels, that would have been sick, but instead they just give the villains little levels to play in. Whatever. So basically, every level you get one villain with and there's like these little challenges or whatever you can do they're much shorter than the regular ones also and then the next level we fight spike mcpokedon all these names sort of sound like they were made by five-year-olds then again they did come from the realm of nightmares so again i'll let it slide there are 14 levels making this the longest Skylanders 3DS game. Even with all the flaws I mentioned about the villains, this is the best 3DS game by far. The boss battle by far is the best in the 3DS series of Skylanders, and is a nice conclusion to the game. And there are more levels, like I said, 14. And while it is sad that you can't really play as villains, their side levels are pretty fun to play in. The level design is the best in the 3DS games, again by far, and each level is impressive for the 3DS. We trap the dream sheep and that's it. Hugo wakes up finally after spreading all that sleep and now the dream dragon can be on his own without the evil sheep. He's probably just going to go sleep more and that's the game. You can also play the these LC levels and they all present themselves as more challenge levels and not regular levels. Except for the mirror mystery but it kind of still does feel like a challenge level. Like I said, even with all its flaws, by far it is the best Skylanders 3DS game. The levels are great. And the levels feel like more Skylanders levels. They feel like actual Skylanders levels, where the other ones necessarily didn't feel like that. And the villain levels add something cool to do in the game. But there's still one more game. Okay, if I'm being honest, I don't know why I'm including this game in the video, but whatever. I'm not going to talk that much about Skylanders Supercharged Racing, since it wasn't necessarily a 3DS game, since it was also on the Wii. In this game, you race. And that's about it. That's the point of this game. If you want a more in-depth video about Skylanders Superchargers Racing, then I'd go check out Crypt Crush's video about this game. I'll link his video in the description if you decide to watch it, but I'm not going to talk about Superchargers Racing since I don't want to, and it just doesn't feel like all the other Skylanders games. But, yeah, that's about it for the Skylanders 3DS games. Four, I would say, main 3DS games, and one rushed out 3DS game that also came out on the Wii. Now, at the end of the day, all the praise that I did give these 3DS games, I still can't recommend you playing them, because they are just little portable versions of the Skylanders games. Do I think they're good games? Well, for the 3DS, yes, but if these came out on console, they wouldn't be good. So I can't fully recommend you playing them if you're just trying to have an actual Skylanders experience. But if you are trying to have like a portable, quick little Skylanders experience you can play on the go, then I would recommend these games. They look like that you can have fun on them for maybe an hour or something like that. These aren't games that in the long run that will be anything special, you know, compared to the other Skylanders games that are on consoles. But if you're just, you know, want to have a new Skylanders experience and you've played all the console games, these games are very cheap. The portals aren't hard to find either, so you definitely can go out and find them. And all your Skylanders work on 3DS games as well. So honestly, if you're just trying to have, you know, a new Skylanders experience, 
and you're up for it, I would say that maybe you should check out the 3DS games. But that's it for this video, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video of me talking about the 3DS games and my opinions on them. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and thank you guys for watching.